Welcome back to some new r slash malicious compliance stories, where people comply to the letter, but not the spirit of our request. I hope you had a great day. Thanks for all the likes and comments on the last video. And now let's start with the first story. It's called Nanny Compliance. Karen and Ken are wealthy and extremely stingy. Their kid is Bob. Henry is an extremely sweet, generous single dad who lost his husband a few years ago and dotes on his kid Steve. I have been a nanny for several years now and for the most part I've worked with lovely, reasonable families. I have contracts for every family that guarantees the hours that I work, meaning if a family goes on vacation I still get paid because I'm technically available to work, but they choose not to use my services. Think of a gym membership where you pay, regardless of whether you've been into the gym in a month. This is standard on nanny contracts. Another bit on my contract is called the nanny share. So if two of the families want to combine for the day, each of them pays two thirds of my regular pay rate. I get paid a little more for watching more kids. And they save a little by only paying a portion of what they would have paid. Karen and Ken's family went to Hawaii three weeks ago and per my contract I was to be paid as usual. Before they left they asked if I could come in and watch Bob the Sunday after they returned so that they could recover and rest. I agreed and my hours were set at 8 am to 4 pm that Sunday. They went on the trip, everything was wonderful and they texted me when they landed saying they would see me at 8 am. The next day when I was about to head out the door at 7.30 am I received a text saying that Bob was just waking up so I should just show up at 8.30 instead. After the day of nannying Karen asked if I could stay past my regular hours during the upcoming week so that they could have two date nights. I agreed and Karen said she would reimburse me for all the extra hours at the end of the week since it would be easier just to make one payment. Totally fine with me. The week finished and I ended up staying an extra 8 hours total for the two date nights. I asked Ken to pay me for 16 hours but he said he had to talk to Karen first to double check hours and would pay me shortly. When I got home I received a text from Karen saying thank you so much for covering for us these past few weeks. Ken and I are feeling refreshed and the show was hilarious. Since we were in Hawaii you were paid for an entire week while you weren't working. We don't think this is quite fair as it is a large sum of money. So we'd like to apply some of those hours to your babysitting today and yesterday. We will pay you for 8 hours instead. I was furious. I screenshotted the part of my contract that plainly stated I would be paid for any hours that their family was on vacation and I reminded her that it was a violation of the contract. She reluctantly agreed and I texted that it would be a total of 16 hours. Karen instantly replied and went off. Texting On Sunday we asked you to come in at 8.30, not 8. We are already being generous and paying you for the holiday we took. We expect you to track your hours better next time. This is unacceptable. You need to be as accurate as possible with the hours that we are paying you. We will pay you for 15 and a half hours. This was a difference of $12.50. I was going to screenshot the part of my contract that said any rescheduling needed a 24 hour notice. But instead I went nuclear. Bob has been tagging along with Steve and me to music class and soccer twice a week outside of Karen's regular contracted hours since January. Karen has never offered to pay for those hours but Henry was fine with paying his full rate for those hours because Steve was having trouble making friends at school and had become close to Bob. I choose not to say anything about the slight bump in pay because I love watching them play together. But as Karen stated I needed to be as accurate as possible. I calculated all the hours that Bob has joined us since January. 6 hours per week times 18 weeks and the total amount they owed was almost $2000. In the group chat with Karen, Ken and Henry I said Karen stated that it was of utmost importance that I track the hours as accurately as possible. So I took it upon myself to double check everything including the chair hours. I didn't realize we had forgotten to track all the hours that Bob joined us for soccer and music. Henry I'm so sorry. Karen actually owes you quite a bit of money. If my calculations are correct they owe X amount of dollars to you and to me. Henry replied Karen and Ken 
I am so disappointed to hear that she hasn't been compensated properly this entire time. I don't need my hours to be refunded for those hours, because I wanted Steve to continue his play dates. But you need to pay her portion immediately. I got a huge chunk of money I wasn't expecting, and I am now on the hunt for my next nanny family. I'll be putting my two weeks notice with Karen and Ken as soon as I do. The next story is called Don't Just Stand There. During an 8 hour shift at a terrible temp job spent on my feet, I stopped moving for 2 minutes to take a breath and just enjoy standing still. I happened to yawn discreetly during minute 2. Shift started early morning. During my shift, I work at least 3 times harder and better than the other employees, who spend most of their time messing around on their phones, chatting and vaping behind the shelves or under the counter. The boss who is never there, but when she is, takes the time to moan at anyone she sees, so she's managing her employees, walks by and says, if you got nothing to do, you need to be cleaning or restocking, don't just stand there. So I spent the rest of the shift detail cleaning, manually the scaling, sterilizing and polishing an espresso machine for 3 hours as slowly and thoroughly as possible. It was very relaxing. Then I peaced out. Screw that manager. The last story is called Zero Overtime. I work as a manager in a call center. I am nowhere near the phones and generally do not interact with customers. Rather, I'm a knowledge repository for my staff and handle communication between our team and the client company which we provide support for. We are a technical support team, not a sales or order support. And the devices which we support are very complex consumer electronics. Most of our support time goes to professional installers and we rarely speak to customers firsthand. In short, my job is to know our policies like the back of my hand and to know the products we support better than anyone, except the designers that engineered them. A secondary part of my job is to coordinate our online chat team which is generally pretty hands off, other than right as the shift ends, when I generally jump in to monitor any active chats and make sure they close up quickly. I don't want to keep my guys here any longer than necessary, they like it better and it cuts down on overtime hours for the entire line of business by a lot. This means I generally rack up 15 to 20 minutes of overtime a day, though some days it can be as little as zero and others as much as an hour. My direct boss knows all about this and is generally all for it. One day however, the guy who was in charge of all the support teams, we work with many brands, sent out a memo that management should never be getting over time. I brought this up with my boss, as this would seriously impact my team, who arranged a meeting with the big boss. Big boss proceeds to tell my boss that no, I cannot rack up any overtime hours. Fine, I get out at a reasonable time every day. I have zero issues with this. So the next Monday, I log out right when my shift ends. Turns out three of my guys were there for an extra hour with last minute chats. Tuesday, nearly the same story. This continues all through the week. We are bleeding overtime hours for support staff, with most of my team getting nearly an hour of overtime per day. This goes on for a pay period, when Big Boss comes back and tells us we were told to reduce overtime hours and that we had somehow racked up even more than we had before. My boss backed me up and told the Big Boss that no, we were told to reduce management overtime hours and that I had indeed not racked up any overtime. Big Boss asked why overtime hours increased and I mentioned I stayed to make sure my team had support they needed to get out as early as possible. Big Boss goes, well, that makes sense, keep doing that, but add any overtime to your Friday lunch so you don't rack up overtime. I explained that I can do this, but will still probably get a bit of overtime on Fridays, since the end of the shift is obviously after lunch. Again, cool, long lunches are nice. This works well for a few weeks. I am making sure I zero out my overtime, but I knew it was only a matter of time before they regretted doing any of this. We were approaching the busy season and getting more and more long chats and calls. I made sure to get Big Boss to email and CC me and my boss this instruction directly. Sure enough, a few weeks later, Monday, I'm there for a roping hour and 30 minutes, trying to get one guy out the door. Tuesday for an hour, Wednesday for an hour 15. 
and to top it off, two whole hours on first day. It was a terrible week for the last minute chats. I tally up my makeup time for my lunch, 5 hours and 45 minutes, plus an hour for my normal lunch. I normally worked 4 hours, 1 hour lunch, then another 4 hours. So that Friday I came in and explained the situation to my boss. He was cool with me working for only 2 hours and 15 minutes the whole day. Because I was doing exactly what the big boss said to do. So an hour into my shift I go on my 6 hour and 45 minute lunch. While I am enjoying my most of the day siesta, the entire line of business is burning down. Chat is so busy, we have people waiting 30 minutes to speak with someone. Calls are so busy, we have 15 calls waiting. On days like this, I normally jump in the queues, as I don't need to document every case like our tier 1s have to. And I'm very good at my job. I can usually knock out a 15 to 20 minute call for a tier 1 in 5 minutes or less. I can easily handle 4 to 5 chats at one time, seriously taking a load off that team. Now, I alone could not save this shift. No way. We were due for a hiring class and were working on onboarding new tier 1s at the time. But does it look bad to the client when one of your key player is absent all but 2 hours and 15 minutes of one of the busiest days ever. I get back in, settle down at my desk right as the rush is clearing up. The damage was already done and we were manageable for the rest of the day. Right at the end of my shift I look and notice that there is no one on our shed and no queue. So I immediately locked out and thanked my team for working hard that day. Then Monday comes. I get to meet with the client, big boss and my boss for our weekly meeting. The client is furious about how on Friday one of our best assets was on a super long lunch break and big boss puts me on the spot and asks why that was. My response was rehearsed. According to company policy established and agreed upon, I am not to accrue overtime hours. Any hours over 8 worked within the work week must be made up during my lunch break on Fridays. Big Boss began denying it when my boss stepped in and was like, wait, I got an email about this. He puts up the email Big Boss sent and shares it on screen in the meeting. Client is upset and the corporate rep begins ripping Big Boss a new one on the phone. After ripping into Big Boss, the corporate rep speaks to me, telling me to accrue as many hours as needed to make sure my job is done and that if my company wants to retain this line of business, Big Boss is not to interfere with my generally very successful management without consulting them and myself. Since then Big Boss has continued to try to interfere and change how I run my line. However, every time so far the corporate rep has set my back. They are extremely happy with my work and now I do a great job. They even push through a large race for me when Big Boss was blocking my boss's attempts to get me more money. Thanks for watching the video to the end. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please don't forget to leave a like, comment and subscribe. And if you have time, watch another one of my videos. Also, if you want to support me further, check out the channel membership or Patreon. And now I hope you have a great day. See you soon. Bye bye.